Hey folks, today is a type of video we haven't done in a while, a keyboard video. And I just wanted to point out that Amazon sent me a keyboard, yet again, in a box that looks an awful lot like a gun box. This thing is really, really tall, man. That's funny. Anyway, I'm going to get the box out and we'll take a look at the keyboard. Alright, here it is. This is the AJAZZ AK510 Retro Mechanical Keyboard. So I saw this keyboard on Amazon the other day. I was just looking at mechanical keyboards because a friend of mine just bought a new one recently and he'd been raving about how nice it was and how much better he can type. And I was like, mm, you know, I haven't been in the keyboard game in a while, so I was thinking about buying the same one he had, but the used one that I was going to buy was bought up by somebody else. So, damn it. <laughs> so I found this one instead. Uh, and I thought it was a little bit cooler, and it had switches that I like too. It has, it has brown cherry brown style switches. They are not cherry switches, uh, but according to a review I saw of this keyboard by uh, the ASMR nerd, if you don't watch him, he he sort of uh, reviews nerdy things with an ASMR twist. But I just watch him for his reviews because they are very detailed and very good. And he'll especially when he does keyboards you get to hear what they sound like. And a lot of the time, that tells me whether I want to buy it, buy one or not. So, this one has a very sort of vintage feel to it. You can see a picture of it here. It uses a very uh, old-looking color scheme. It looks like a bit like a keyboard you'd get with an AT or something like that back in the day. Some of this packaging is just bizarre. What does it say on the back of here? It's a 104 key keyboard. There you go. Comes in a comes with a nice plastic cover. That's kind of cool. So it actually comes with a cover. That's really nice. So that you can just use this as a dust cover. There's the keyboard. This Wow, this thing has some weight to it. It's a pretty heavy keyboard. It feels like old keyboards used to. It has, a, it has to have a steel plate in it or something like that. I thought I saw something else in here. Ah, it comes with a key removal tool and a good one, too. Not the pure plastic ones, the actual metal ones that don't ruin, the, ruin and mar up the keys. It ends in a gold-plated USB uh, cable, which is nice. Let me get it out of its bag here. Take a good look at it. Look at that. Very vintage looking keyboard. It even has sort of rounded keycaps, like a lot of 80s home computers used to, so that's really cool. Uh, it's also RGB backlit, too. So it has this vintage look when the backlight is not on, but when you turn it on, you get um, RGB backlighting. So apparently, according to what I've read on the website, you have to use the software to deal with that, which I'm not a huge fan of, I have to say. So what I might end up doing is uh, plugging this into a Windows PC, configuring it that way, and then uh, calling it a day as far as that's concerned. But let's get a good feel for it and see how it sounds, too. Nice light touch. Nice chunky too. When the key when the key goes all the way down to the bottom or bottoms out, it's very solid. There's no flex when you do that at all. So there's definitely some sort of steel plate or something along those lines in there. Yeah, it's a very smooth, subtle brown switch type of thing. It's very, it's reminiscent of the Velocifier keyboards that I've typed on, but not quite the same. But so far, I like that. I, I actually like that. It feels nice. It's very smooth. Um, on real cherry brown boards, uh, when they haven't been broken in yet, they're a little gritty. Um, 
and once they're broken in, they're they're pretty smooth, but still slightly gritty. This has none of that real grit, but if you push it slowly, you can feel the tactile bump in it. There's a little bit of a bump in there, but it's it's pretty subtle. So, and it's 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 a pretty quiet keyboard too. So that's kind of nice. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, this thing can be programmed in the software. I plan to use this on a Linux machine, so hopefully this can be programmed in the software, and it'll just remember what the remember uh, the profile or whatever that you give it through the software. So I don't know. Maybe there's a key combination on here as well to uh, turn the uh, backlight stuff on and off. I've noticed that the keycaps that I actually got don't have any of the media symbols on them like that did in the picture. So that's kind of strange. Like you look at the uh, this picture here you get media controls printed on the keycaps, but those are not printed on these keycaps for whatever reason. I think that looks better, personally, but if the functionality is there, you might as well print it on the keycap. I mean, I don't know. That's the only thing I find a bit annoying about that. But anyway, I'm going to go plug this keyboard in and play with it and see what I can do about the RGB backlighting to make it all one color. I'm sure some of you wanted to know what type of switches are in here or who makes the switches. Well, it feels a bit like an Onimo switch, but if you turn the, or if, you, if I turn my flashlight on and shine on it, the logo on there, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video, it says Ajaz on it. So these could be custom switches made by Ajaz. Uh, since the patent on the Cherry switches is expired, it's very feasible that they could have made their own switches. And, uh, I'd say they did a very good job with these brown switches. I, I really, really like them. So, yeah, that's kind of surprising to see them make their own switches. That's really cool. You know what time it is. RGB! <laughs> so, uh, this is what happened when I plugged the keyboard into my computer straight away. You get a blue LED for the uh, caps lock and scroll lock lights. Although the scroll lock light doesn't seem to do anything. So that might actually be a light for the uh Yeah, that's a that's a light for the uh Windows key lock, actually. Shows you how useless scroll locks become. So this is one of the few keyboards where you actually want to save the uh quick start guide, because it has the uh the multimedia functions printed on it instead of on the frickin' keycaps, guys. Why aren't they on the keycaps? Really? So you have multimedia controls with F1 through F6. Um, you even have a function plus delete for uh, default factory settings. And this is the most important part, light control. Now, I've seen online that people just use the software for this, but personally I just don't care about customizing my lighting effects all that much. These are the only ones you really need if you're a simple person like me. Function plus scroll lock changes the lighting effect of the keyboard. Function plus print screen changes the color. And function plus insert changes the color of the sides. Now, on the sides of the keyboard, you get these little accents here, which, of course, have LEDs in them. Why wouldn't they? And um, you can change the color of those individually as well. So if we do functions uh, scroll lock, how cool is that? You get neat lighting effects. Function scroll lock. You can even get what I like to call Christmas lights. Doesn't affect. And then if you do function print screen, you get. That doesn't really change the color, does it? That's like an explosion, like water dripping or something like that. Change the color of that with print screen, so you, now it's green. Get your full RGB spectrum there. You can even make it Christmas lights, which is kind of cool. So 
So there's a lot of lighting effects built in, and you can also have just a solid color too, which is what I would prefer when I have a backlight turned on. So I'd probably make it red or green, something like that. Kind of like that Christmas light pattern, though. That's kind of nice. But yeah, there's red. Now you can also turn the backlight off with function and escape. So let me... So there you go. You can just turn it off and have it as a normal keyboard. And I think it remembers this that when you uh, turn it off. So let's go around the back of the computer and unplug this just to see what happens. It's unplugged. Let's plug it back in. It appears to remember my settings. So you don't necessarily need the software to be tied to this 24-7. The, the keyboard actually has memory of its own. So that's pretty nice. Now how does the typing feel? Well, let's give that a test, shall we? Okay, got this all set up. Now the main question here is typing feel. So let's open LibreOffice Writer and give this a shot. Even just typing that command was fast and natural for me. So let's try typing something and see how that feels. The, uh, make the font nice and big. It's the model number of this keyboard, the AK510. Wow, I'm. This feels good, like really good. I I could go into typing on this, like I've had this keyboard for a year. <laughs> it feels that nice to me, and you know, brown switches are my favorite, so that's sort of a bias of mine anyway. So, I think that's part of it. So the feel of the keyboard is good, uh, and overall, I like this keyboard. Um, what I thought of it when I saw it on Amazon is pretty similar to what I think of it now. Uh, I like what they've done here. They have a really... They've gone all out on the vintage feel. It's got the steel play in it that makes it super heavy and high quality. They've gone for PBT plastic on the keycaps. I'm not sure about the rest of the chassis, but definitely the keycaps are PBT, just like old keyboards used to be, which means that the keys won't wear shiny and lettering won't wear off because they're also double-shot PBT, which is super, super high quality. Um, it's a sleeper keyboard, which is the whole reason I liked the theming of this. If you have the backlight off like it is now, it just looks like an old keyboard. But if you turn the backlight on, you know, it, it, it looks like a gaming keyboard and feels like a gaming keyboard too, on top of that. And with all the different lighting effects and whatnot, you know, it's it's as RGB and modern as you could want it to be, but then you turn it off and it's just as boring and normal as it could possibly be. So you could put this in your office or something, since it's brown switches and it won't be that loud, you know. I mean, obviously that space bar. That space bar is a little bit loud, but other than that, you know, it's, uh, it's a good office keyboard, it's a good home keyboard. I'm using this keyboard on my main Linux machine. This is my main computer. So this is the keyboard I'll be using for damn near everything. And, um, wow, am I impressed with this so far. They really don't make keyboards like this very often anymore. Uh, most of the time you find a bunch of black keyboards that are based on something like a CoStar chassis or have something like uh, typewriter keycaps on them or uh, just in general are kind of cheap. Uh, that's what I see all over Amazon usually. And to get anything super premium these days, you got to go with... Um, usually something above a hundred dollars but this cost seventy dollars US on Amazon and for that money this is phenomenal like really phenomenal for what you get um, they didn't waste a single bit of your dollar and the well so the first downfall is 
getting a hold of the software. The software itself works fine, as far as I've seen in other reviews, so that's not a big deal. Um, the second downfall that I think is probably uh, the worst for customization is that these keycaps that you get on this keyboard are kind of unique to this keyboard uh, because they're a tall, rounded keycap. Uh, if you were to replace this keycap set with something else, it wouldn't be the same height as these keys are. Now, that you might not care about that, but it would kind of ruin the aesthetic of the keyboard, and it just wouldn't feel the same. You know what I mean? So that's the only other downfall. But the good news is that they gave you high-quality keycaps to begin with. These are PBT double-shot keycaps. They should last the lifetime of the keyboard and even beyond, no problem. So there should just be no need to replace the keycaps on this particular keyboard. And... You see, they, they just kind of thought of everything except a good place to download the software. <laughs> so, yeah, very pleased with this keyboard. Very happy with it. No, no real qualms except maybe the, uh, the numlock and caps lock LEDs could have been um, green or red or something that's actually a little bit of, that makes it look a little bit of, of an older keyboard. But yeah, other than that, I've been very pleased with this keyboard. Highly recommended. Um, Oh yeah, there was a third thing actually. Uh, they need to put the, they should put legends on the keycaps, for um, the media keys. That should be there, considering it's in the pictures, like I showed earlier. That should be on these keycaps. As far as the uh, backlight stuff, that doesn't necessarily need to be, but it would be nice if that was there too, um, so you didn't have to memorize all these button commands. So that forces you to keep this instruction manual around in case you forget. So I won't be throwing that away anytime soon. Other than that, um, there are you know there are a couple flaws, but they're not big ones. The keyboard's quality itself, the product itself, makes up for just about everything else in my opinion. But if they're going to release a revision of this, they should definitely put the markings on the keycaps, and um, you know that that's really the biggest qualm. And they should. They should give you the software in the box, even if it's on a CD or something. Just put it in the box. Um, that way, you have it. You, you have it. But other than that, I've been very pleased with this keyboard and would absolutely recommend it. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure typing on this thing. It's just been very nice. I think I'll like this keyboard for years to come. So, yeah, there you have it. Very, very nice keyboard. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to reach me on social media, those links are down in the description. And if you'd like to join our Discord community, that link is also down in the description. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao. Thank you.